Hey folks, Griffin here. We're going to do another John League. Um, we are getting ready for Star City Games Regionals. And we're trying to nail down our Jund list. And a new wrinkle has been added to the, the equation because we got our asses handed to us uh, in the last video by the new Jeskai control deck that features Teferi and looks really, really good. Teferi is pretty solid. Um, so we're going to try to address that a little bit, but keep, um, keep the the list good against the rest of the format. The things we're worried most about are things like Hollow One and uh, Humans and the Mirror Match. Those are the things that, that are the scariest for us. So if we can continue to be good against those decks uh, and still pack a little bit more heat for something like the Control decks, then that would be great. Um, the first thing I did is I, I swapped a Terminate out for a Dread Boar. I was finding the Terminate, the instant speed um, of the tournament, Terminate was really useful over Dread Boar. Lots of times, lots of times it doesn't matter, but it's been really important to have the instant speed um, effect against stuff like Affinity, um, even Humans. Um, but Dread Boar is also really good because it hits Teferi and is not a pretty much dead card like Terminate is against decks that only have Planeswalkers as targets. Um, in addition to that, we've swapped out a Bayloth for a Finx in the sideboard. Finx is a lot a lot better against something like Jeskai Control than Obstinate Bayloth. Um, you lose a little bit against... It's a little worse in the mirror than Bayloth. It's a little worse than... Um, it's a little worse against something like 8-Rack, small pox deck. It's also worse against um, Hollow One, but I think I think it's pretty reasonable to give that a try um, and just mix it up. They they're pretty much the same same card, but just have a little bit different applications and different matchups. So yeah, this is what we're gonna gonna run in a league, and we'll see how we do. Okay, we are here for round one. Ooh, I'm against the Holy Shamgar. Well, probably streaming. I could go online right now, figure out what he's playing, but... Holy Shamgar. Not going to do that. Not even going to go to Twitch and look at the thumbnail and see what deck they're on. Keeping this hand... Could this be a mirror match? Nope. Am I getting boggled? No. The, okay, this is the uh, the combo deck here. They're calling it they're calling it eight packed because it plays summoners packed and it plays summoners packed and pact of negation. So we're going to take the Devoted Druid. I think that's pretty important. Because we don't want them to get mana. I think if they play Devoted Druid next turn, they would actually win. However, if we had, played, if we had taken the Vizier, they can't search. Hmm. So maybe that was the wrong... Because they can't... Summoner's Pact for Vizier. So maybe that was wrong. Ooh, a post-mortem lunge. So we might actually have to take that because they can just win next turn with Devoted Druid. And hopefully they don't play any creatures this turn and we can uh, nuke their vizier with Liliana. They got a Street Wraith. This deck is pretty crazy. <clears throat> he 
use our adventurer's impulse. We have one card we don't know about. So let's go ahead and get... I'm pretty happy with getting a... Overgrown Tomb. So that went pretty well, all things considered. Here's a traverse for a land. I like that. There's a Duskwatch recruiter. Okay. So we can get rid of almost their whole hand here. So I think what we're going to do first is each player discards. Um, I'm going to need a third black source, so I think I'm just going to fetch Blood Crypt with this Wooded Foothills. I don't really have to worry about my uh, my life total that much. So if that's the case, we're going to discard. Well, we'll discard the other fetch land. They can both get Blood Crypt. They discarded a Summer's Pact. I guess I probably should have Inquisition first. They have Summer's Pact and Traverse. They now have four card types, so we're going to get rid of the Traverse and leave them with Pact. I'm going to play this Liliana and make them sacrifice. Keep this one. Okay, so now they have a Summoner's Pact. So our Liliana's looking pretty good here. They could search for some creature and cast it if their last card is a land. But it's pretty important to get that Duskwatch Recruiter off the table there. If their last card is not a land, then it's going to be really tough for them to play Summer's Pact. They drew another Traverse, okay. For a Druid, sure. So they can, if they want to, Summer's Pact in response. I don't think there's anything useful to, for any reason that that would be a good play. We don't really need this Blackleaf Cliffs. So they lose that, so if they get Vizier, they have the combo, but we still have this Liliana. We could make them sacrifice this Druid. Cycle of Street Wraith. So there's a Vizier. So, uh, if they drew the nuts, then I guess we're dead. Their draw steps were Vizier and something to win with it. What exactly did you draw? And then we drew Ballista. Not a bad series of draw steps. Alright. Fair enough. Um, okay. So, 
Let's see. I think Engineer Explosives is going to be good. I think Jun Charm and Pyroclasm are going to be good. Um, and Murderous Cut, sure. Uh, Liliana was pretty good there. I don't know if I want Bitter Blossom. That's a little slow. Dreadbore is also kind of slow. I don't think I want the rest. Interesting. I think I'll cut a courser. Let's see how this does for us. It's possible that Pyroclasm and Jun Charm aren't really that good. They kind of only are going to play one card at a time, one one of their creatures at a time, either the Druid or the Vizier. Nile Spellbomb might be important too because they have they have Mystic Enforcer in their sideboard. We don't have a lot of answers to, except to Nile Spellbomb away their their threshold. We'll see. Sand is fantastic. So, I think I want. Hmm. We are going to take a lot of damage if we Bloodstained Mire for Blood Crypt. But it might be the right play here. Nah, I, I've. I don't know. Find out. Because we can also get another Overgrown Tomb with a Bloodstained Mire. I think that's probably what we'll do. Ancient Stirrings. Why does this deck run Ancient Stirrings? What are the colorless cards that they want to find? There's Lands, there's Ballista. None of the packs have colors, even though... Yeah, there's a Ballista. Okay, so I definitely want to get that out of their hand. So let's... Uh, I guess get an Overgrown Tomb here. Do the old Lava Spike herself plan. They'll be able to Traverse for another Ballista if they want to next turn because of lands, artifact, creature, and sorcery. So, taking the Ballista doesn't seem that great, but it does, you know, get rid of the Ballista and the Traverse. Um, kind of ties up their mana a little bit. We could also just take the Devoted Druid. I guess when they play the Ballista, they're going to be able to Traverse for... Ballista later anyway, because they're going to use their Ballista, it's going to go to the graveyard. So we could just take the Devoted Druid, leave them with as few combo pieces as possible. I kind of like that plan. Um, and then we'll attack. I mean, Ballista's coming down and using itself on the Lava Mancer right now anyway, so we may as well. We really need to draw some removal. So there's a Ballista, and I'm guessing we're killing the Lava Mancer. Yep. Okay. That's not very good. At least we have a 4-5, and so maybe we can clock them. This hand looked very good. Um, two draw steps were lands, so it does not help. They have a lot of redundancy in their deck. It's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. There's a commune for vizier. Adventurous Impulse. Look at the top three cards. We reveal a creature or land. Ooh, whiff. Okay, I like that. 
Hall of the Bandit Lord. Oh, that means that they can win next turn? Gonna just do that, because it's our, I don't know, most likely way of winning, I think, is to bluff like we've got something here. So I think they have it rolled up. They play Hall of the Bandit Lord, giving... Or they, they use Hall of the Bandit Lord to give their Devoted Druid haste. I guess they have to tutor for the Devoted Druid. Then cast it here. It adds one. They play a Vizier. I guess they need um, like a kill condition. And what's cool is that we can attack them for enough damage next turn so that they can't, even though you know they don't want to play their, pi their, their creatures into our Pyroclasm, we can attack them for enough damage next turn to turn off Hall of the Bandit Lord. So that's a good sign. Although I guess Devoted Druid, if it has haste, can add two mana. There's a Vizier. Okay, interesting. Interesting that they play that Vizier. Let's go ahead and play this court of this land. So we know about Traverse. We could Pyroclasm the Vizier. Or we can attack with Raging Ravine. The thing about attacking with Raging Ravine is that it deals the same amount of damage, but we get a counter on the ravine. Um We'll get a counter on the ravine. Yeah, I don't think that's worth it. I think we want to get rid of that Vizier, because if they drop post-mortem lunge, then they kill us with Devoted Druid. Potentially. I think we just want to get combo pieces off the table as much as possible. The problem is they're at 5. So they could just kill us with the Hall of the Bandit Lord. They have just enough life to use Hall of the Bandit Lord and Horizon Canopy. There's a Druid. Yep. And another Vizier. Do you have something good? going to try and find one, okay? So they have infinite green, but they might just not have the, the, the kill condition here. Okay, cool, good. Real quick, I'm going to look up, see if they play Leyline of Sanctity. No, they don't really play any Leyline of Sanctity, I don't believe. Okay, so that's good to know. I wonder if Damping Sphere is good here. I really kind of don't think so. But some of their turns consist of doing lots of things at once. I don't think I want that. And I don't think I want Nile Spellbomb either. All we've got are threats and removal and discard. So I think I'm pretty happy with the way the list looks right now. I don't think we want the rest, and I don't think we want Blightning. And I don't think we want Nile Spellbomb. Damping Sphere just kind of doesn't do enough. Especially on the draw. Ooh, boy. Um, I'm going to keep this. It is sketchy, but it's got everything we need. All we need to do is draw a couple of lands and we're golden. But we can get rid of a lot of combo pieces with this hand. On the play, I would definitely not take this hand, but on the draw, 
I can't imagine a six card hand being better than this. They they are just like so low to the ground. They have so few lands um, that their deck is very redundant, and you can't like that hand that we had last time where it was three spells and four lands, and then we try and trade one for one with all their stuff. Like we got to get pretty lucky to win that game. I feel like we're gonna keep it. These discard spells get a lot better. Um, after a mulligan as well. Going to five. It's funny, they kind of get worse on on five. They might have, especially on the draw, they might have like played out their whole hand already. But we'll see. It's not what I wanted to see. I'm going to get a blood crypt. Dusklatch, Commune, or Adventurer's Impulse. I think I want to take Duskwatch. Guarantee that these uh, discard spells do something. There's that Adventurer's Impulse. Adventurous Impulse. I'm guessing this... Ooh, Hall of the Bandit Lord. Okay. Well, it's a good time to inquisition that out of their hand. I guess I could have taken the commune instead and then bolted the devoted druid. Street Wraith entered the revealed cards zone. So they have two cards we don't know about. Let's see what they are. Vizier and Hall. Okay. And it's a legendary land, so that's good for us. And we've got a bolt up. So I like our spot. Need to draw. What would be the best draw? Would be Blooming Marsh, probably. The worst draw would be the one Courser. <laughs> Playing against somebody who's a streamer, you gotta be patient because they're probably doing a lot of talking. Just like my opponents probably have to be patient when they're playing against me and I'm doing a lot of talking. Summoner's Pact. Sure. Are you dead? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that worked out. That was a very strange play. <laughs> we were gonna. I, I knew that as soon as I said that Corsair was the worst draw in the deck, that we were gonna draw Corsair next turn. And I'm so glad that that we just won instead. Like, thank you so much, Holy Shamgar, for just, I don't know, conceding there. Like, there are so many things that could go wrong. Like, if I hit a black source, I have Liliana available. Otherwise, I have a deck full of removal spells that cost black or red or black red. Like, I don't exactly know... I mean, you know, getting a druid in play is great and all, but, like, holy crap. <laughs> That's super aggressive. Especially because they they had a, a dead card in their hand anyway, and could have used that to discard to Liliana if I did find the third land and, 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 cast, and cast it to tick up. Yeah, that's wild to me, but okay. <laughs> Alright, well... That was fun. Let's go to uh, round two.
All right, folks, we're back for round two. We are on the play. Thank you. Uh, no. I don't think we can keep this. We don't even have a fetch land to go along with our Lava Mancer. Okay. All right. That's fine. Doesn't matter. We're fetching anyway. Um, I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be Blood Crypt, Blood Crypt Inquisition here. I went back and I watched that uh, that round last round because uh, my opponent was streaming, so I was able to go and watch the past broadcast. It was really fascinating. It's it's so interesting to be on the other other side, see what you should have done or whatever. I don't think we screwed up anything, so that's good. Sometimes like when you're streaming or when you go back and watch, your opponent just like. Uh, yeah, pay two life. It's just like, oh wow, they played so badly here. I can't believe they did that. Whoa. So this looks like some dredge. Um, I guess we snag this faceless looting. They don't have any black sources at the moment, so dark blast isn't that bad for us. Uh, insolent neonate doesn't really do that much for them unless we put dark blast in their graveyard. But it is better for our scavenging use later. Like, we have the card we need for this matchup. I think it's just a Faithless Looting, though. I just don't want them to... I don't want them to find Black Source, and... I don't know. Because taking the Dark Blast is interesting, because one of the ways that we can lose this is we go Ooze, go, and then they go, like, on their upkeep, Dark Blast it, dredge it back, Dark Blast it again. The problem is that they don't have... They need two black mana to do that, and they discarded Dark Blast and Stinkweed Imp. Okay. All right. So we might be in business here, because the Dark Blast isn't going to come online ever. So now they're going to... And they're also, like, it's going to be hard for them to find a black source, unless they drew one that turn. There's a Neonate. All right, let's take a, a gander at the old graveyard here. There's a Narc Amoeba. They got a Blood Gas. Oh, they got two, three Blood Gas. Oh, God. So even though we had turn two ooze on the play, it is not going to be enough. Most likely, at least. And there's another Neonate. They don't have any creatures in the graveyard at the moment. But what we can do is Thought Seize them. I guess we take the Imp. The problem is they're just going to dredge it back with Neonate. Playing that Neonate was pretty clutch for them. Because um, they definitely need to get up to a 3-3. I was kind of hoping that they had another card in their hand, but they had drawn a land for that first draw step. So we're going to take that. At least what's going to happen is that they're going to have to dredge. Or I can wait and do it in response to the Neonate. Let's see if they end up using that thing at all. But they're going to have to dredge. Okay, so now I can just do it in response. So they dredge loam. Now they dredge loam again. So conflagrate is looking very scary. Oh, they can do it for three now. Yeah. I guess it could have been right to get rid of the Conflagrate. But they had to dredge that other loam to get up to enough cards. Or, no, that's not true. They had the one loam already. It could have been right to just take the Conflagrate, but the problem is I just take so much damage. I need to start picking these things off. 
Um, Cofflegrate's gone. They have no cards in hand. We can't do anything from here, though, so we're dead. All right. So this is where we would rather have Anger of the Gods than Jun Charm. That's for sure. Um, Nile Spellbomb is great. I don't think we want Obstinate Bayloth, but Kitchen Finks is pretty good. Uh, I don't think we want Murderous Cut. And Engineered Explosives can be good. Duress is reasonable, but you miss a lot. Oh, Jun Charm, obviously. Um... Yeah, I think that's fine. Mostly we just want to get rid of Liliana. Those are those are super duper bad. Um, and everything else seems okay. Even the little removal spells aren't the worst. They can pick off Narc Amoebas and, and uh, prized amalgams. Yep. Got a Spellbomb Gun Ooze. I like this. And we have a Bitter Blossom and a Goyf. This is probably the best hand we'll ever have. If we don't lose, the, if we don't win this game, then I don't know. Sure. That is fine. Going right after it. So I could just nuke this thing right now, but like, what's the worst that happens? Narc Amoeba triggers? Because I could do it now, too. Like, I don't think a Narc Amoeba is going to kill us. Like, I'm going to get this ooze down. I guess they get to dredge loam on their on their draw step here, but like I'm kind of not concerned about that either. Now they could have abrupt decay, and that would be pretty good. So they dredge loam, hit a bunch of lands. See if they decide to target a bunch of those loams. They could be abrupt decaying also. Like one of our things here. It's a lot of lands in their graveyard. Loam for lands, sure. So now they get to discard something to hand size. We get to eat the loam. Don't feel like I want to play Thoughtseize. I feel like I want to play Bitter Blossom this turn. Hmm. Stomping Ground Bitter Blossom is probably our best shot here. Because we've got this Nile Spell Bomb rolled up. For anything that gets like completely out of hand. Like they don't have any dredgers in their graveyard. It would take a pretty like wild set of circumstances for them to like completely go off here. And I do think Bitter Blossom is the right play instead of Tarmogoyf. There's a land. Conflagrate for nothing. Sure. So now they can conflagrate and shoot down this ooze. But it takes two of their cards. One of which is a stinkweed imp anyway. Cool. Alright.
So we have a lot of stuff going on here. Um, we've only got the one black source. That kind of makes our Nile Spellbomb worse. Uh, let's see. Inquisition. Because I wanted to go get that red source, but leave up as much green as possible for the ooze. What happens if we Inquisition, just take all of their stuff, and then nuke their graveyard? They are left with a single prize amalgam, and we have Bitter Blossom plus Tarmogoyf going. Because we could also just hit the amalgam, hit the imp. I think we just don't worry about the Nile Spellbomb uh, drawing us a card. We just hit Stinkweed Imp. Get a swamp here. Thought sees the amalgam. Nuke the graveyard. Can't pay, but that's okay. And now land this Lurgoyf. Should be in pretty good shape. Their hand is Gemstone Mine Tech Edge. Tech Edge is an interesting one. Kill our red source. That's fine. Sure. Don't exactly know what their plan is here. So we know how they have a gemstone mine. Quagmire is good. Like, I'm fine with blocking that Narcomoeba because the way that we lose this game is from them cobbling something together because they chump blocked with the Narcomoeba. There's a Neonate. Sure wish I had another red source, but that's alright. I'm guessing this is a chump block. Yep, take three. They could discard. Yeah, they lose a land. So they still have that gemstone mine, which will allow them to play a prize amalgam if they draw one. That is exactly what happened. Don't feel like casting that. Death Touch is pretty cool here. Plus they go to three if they block the Quagmire. And this only comes back at end step and enters the battlefield tapped. So I'm not too concerned about them getting that back. The only thing that they can do is somehow get a Narcomoeba into play to get that back and then they can survive this turn. Yeah. All right, so that worked out super well. We had the nuts. Wouldn't mind that again. Um, still don't think I want Damping Sphere. They don't have any of their own discard for Bayloth stuff. I don't think we want Murderous Cut. And I don't think we want Pyroclasm either. And as funny as it is, I think all this discard is okay. Duress might be better than Thoughtseize. You're not hitting that many creatures. The only th creature you can hit that you want to actually discard is Insolent Neonate. I think we just roll with this. Yep, looks good. Insolent neonate. So now the question is, do we Inquisition or do we Spellbomb? I think it's just Spellbomb and then we can... Like, Inquisition gets a lot better when you can take a Dredger and then have Spellbomb rolled up. The problem is Abrupt Decay, which is a pretty significant problem. But it is really dangerous to let them just 
untap like they can just totally go off do that so there goes a stinkweed imp and they dredged a whole bunch of nothing okay so that makes me think that they don't have abrupt decay which is a great sign for us and they could dredge they could loam here Cathartic Reunion, Discarding, Prize Amalgam, and Stinkweed Imp. Do I feel like it's right to Spellbomb yet? I don't. I think I want to hit a whole bunch of like Bloodgast and other stuff, Triggers, and then nuke their graveyard. So now we can get rid of all of this stuff. And we can Inquisition and hit something that we want. So let's do that. What is the most likely thing that's going to kill us here? Like, Loam is pretty bad when they don't have any anything going on. After we nuke their graveyard, what's the worst thing for us? We could also just put a prize amalgam in their graveyard and snag that, but I don't think that's right. Loam starts to look really bad when they have no lands in their graveyard. Just kind of doesn't do anything. They have Dark Blast in their graveyard at the moment. I think I'm going to take the Faithless Looting. I think that is their best route to doing something interesting. Like, as far as the long game goes, I think that's their best bet. And I'm going to go get an Overgrown Tomb here. I guess I could have... Could have played the Stomping Ground or the Raging Ravine there. But this way we get a card. Bitter Blossom is okay. <laughs> so they can just cast a Stinkweed Imp probably what they're doing, unless they're going to loam instead. Yep, they're going to loam back the single Bloodstained Mire. So now they have a Dredger again. We can Inquisition. Nothing, really. Nothing seems very good to Inquisition. I think it's Bitter Blossom plus Ravine. Seems like our best bet, so we can Huntmaster next turn. Explosives. For some reason, they have Ancient Grudge in their graveyard, or in their deck. It's interesting. Uh, so they have Loam and Amalgam and Stinkweed right now. I guess they're probably setting up for a big Conflagrate. Ooze was a great draw. They did. Yeah, they dredged Loam got back a land, and then didn't play it? They could have cast Stinkweed Imp if they had gotten a Black Source, but maybe... Did we, like, get rid of their Black Sources or anything? There is a, there is a Blood Crypt in the graveyard. Gotta have more than that, though, I would imagine. Um, I think it's Huntmaster here. Just mostly because there isn't anything great in the graveyard to hit at the moment. Okay, Lightning Axe. Okay, now there goes Stinky Dump. So now I'm pretty happy that we didn't expose our ooze to anything. Um, if they have a way to get Amalgam into the graveyard, then that'd be really good for them. They dredged the Imp. They loam Dakmore Salvage. So now they're ready to get back uh, to cast that um, to cast that Stinkweed Imp. But the stink, uh, Stinkweed Imp is in the graveyard now. Now that must have been a different Stinkweed Imp. Okay. So I guess we Inquisition and then take 
stinkweed imp. Or we could we could hit all three loams, but the ro loams aren't really concerning me that much right now. Because there aren't any lands in the graveyard. And hitting one loam doesn't really do anything. So I think we hit this stinkweed imp. Um, I should be attacking first, I believe. That's fair. So that puts more creatures in the graveyard for the ooze, and I'll get rid of this imp. I'll get rid of this other imp. So now our opponent's hand is garbage. They're dredging. They hit a narco amoeba and the fourth loam. They could loam into, I don't know, whatever. Graveyard hate is so good. Scavenging ooze is amazing, and that Nile spell moment was really good too. I like I. The thing about Nile spell moment and scavenging ooze is that I don't think I played them right. Like. You know, looking back, I think that we either did it wrong or we were, I don't know, at least I didn't feel very confident in the fact that I was doing that right or um, or anything like that. And the same is true with the ooze. But they're just so powerful. Nile Spellbomb, just so good. Yeah, all right, cool. Uh, we're 2-0. We'll be back for round three in a little bit. Hello, we are back for round three. Hand looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Sea Chrome Coast. Aether Vial. This looks like a Craig Wesco concoction. I believe Craig Wesco played like a blue white vial deck. Nope, it's just humans. Okay. So the other vial doesn't really do anything. Um, I ugh, can we beat two mantis riders? Well, next turn they're gonna play either vial or they're gonna play a creature that they draw. We have this dread boar. It's gonna be really tough to race a mantis rider, especially because the first mantis rider is gonna get in for three. They're going to vial it in, attack us, and then we're going to dread bore it, and then they're going to vial in another one and attack us. So can we can we try and win that race? I think it's really hard. So I think I'm going to take a Mantis Rider and just, you know, Reflector Mage is going to hit us at some point. It's also possible that we'll draw another removal spell, whereas, like, removal spells are really good against Mantis Rider. They're not very good against Reflector Mage. I don't know. I think it's just too dangerous to leave two Mantis Riders in their hand. That's really close, though. Because there's a really good chance that they draw a two-drop here, too. Or just any creature. Nope. That's great for us. I guess they could, dro they could drop a Champion or a Noble Hierarch next turn. Tarmogoyf is really bad. Um, I think what I need to do is Bloodstained Mire for Overgrown Tomb and play Scavenging Ooze. So this is a pretty juicy target for a Reflector Mage. <laughs> and we can eat that Mantis Rider. So what I'm expecting to have happen here is our opponent goes land Mantis Rider, attack. We Dread Bore it. We... So another Sea Crown Coast. Um, we dread bore it. We 
eat the other one, we get our scavenging is bounced, and then we untap. If we've drawn a land at this point, we play two Tarmogoyfs. Seems pretty good. Now the Reflector Maging right away. Okay, so that's actually maybe even better for us. Two Coursers. Um, is it right to get a Stomping Ground here? I think we're playing Courser. I think we were playing Courser. I think we're getting a Stomping Ground, even though I don't love taking the damage. The good thing about Courser is that our, our life total will go up as long as we're hitting lands. K Command is pretty good. It's kind of worse against these Vials. They're still not Viling anything in, which is nice for us. Canopy. Here is a Mantis Rider. They have one card in hand. So a land would be fantastic. Ooze is not. Ooze is not fantastic. They also have Restoration Angel mana up, which is a little scary. I don't think I can really play around it. I think we have to Dreadbore this. Okay. So that's good. So I don't know what their last card is. Usually they would just fire off Horizon Canopy. This could be some two drop Thalia, maybe? Usually they just fire off Horizon Canopy on their own turn if they're not doing anything relevant. Hierarch, sure. Hierarch, okay. So now we're getting attacked for four. It's quite a bit. Don't feel like I can block... Don't feel like it's right to block here. I need to, I need to just hit lands. I think we're fine if we do that. Okay, so now we can either play a Courser and then gain two life. We can play a Tarmogoyf, or we can play an Ooze. Of those, I think Ooze might be the best. We could also leave up Kolagon's Command mana. That just doesn't seem like it's very good. Kolagon's Command gets a lot worse when they have Vile in play. You try and like hit them on their draw step. There's a really good chance that they're just casting whatever their card is anyway, be, or vialing it in anyway. At least when there's two vials in play like there are right now. So, um, however, if we kill a hierarch then there's a pretty good chance we can have enough mana to block. Or, uh, sorry, we can... They'll lose an Exalted trigger, and so we'll be able to block. The only thing that hurts that would be another Reflector Mage, or a Thalia's Lieutenant. Of course, Mantis Rider would be really bad for us, too. So I kind of want to get some more life gain into the battlefield. I think we're going to go with this ooze plan. Does not use our mana super effectively, though. Eh, uh, let's, let's, let's do the, let's do the, <clears throat> the discard play. Thought sees on top. 
So that's pretty much a dead draw. Let's do the discard plan. Two damage. Discard a card. I could hit the vial instead, but like they have so much mana that doesn't really do anything. Uh, two damage. Discard. Like I said, there's a very good chance that they just vial whatever this is in. It could be another Hierarch. It could be a Champion. Freebooter. Totally fine with that. Because we don't have anything to take. So that worked out. It was a little risky, though. Okay. A Goyf on top. I think what I want to do is play a Goyf and an Ooze. Goyf is pretty big right now. We can start to attack soon. Yep. So the Exalted on the Freebooter is a little scary, but we get to gain a lot of life every turn if we want it. Okay, so now I'm going to play another Courser. Drawing a lot of cards, doing a lot of things. I think I'm pretty safe to attack with the with both. <laughs> yeah, we need to start getting our clock on here. You never know how much time you have against this deck. They could put in a Thalia's Lieutenant or something. But they would have done that on their turn, I would imagine. Get an extra damage. Okay, so here's a Freebooter. So they might be so now they can trade with our ooze. But I don't really care. Cause we get to get the reflector mage off the battlefield. The thing about two freebooters is that it negates the uh the effectiveness of their exalted. So I'm not I'm not concerned about leaving two flyers in the play. So the worst case scenario is probably like a Mantis Rider or a Thalys Lieutenant, but we have two two life gain from the Courser and then potentially even three more life gain from this ooze that's in our hand. They can't even draw a Reflector Mage to um, prevent us from casting the ooze. I wonder if they just accidentally skipped their second main phase. That was a little awkward right there. Okay, well, they're just going to vial in... Let's see, what? Meddling Mage? Meddling Mage is a good one. Let's see what they name. Cool thing is we get to play two Tarmogoyfs that are both huge. The name Scavenging is, yeah. Fatal Push is pretty solid. Let's play our land and play two Tarmogoyfs. Let's attack with everything. They can't do anything about our Coursers. Like, they can't block and kill our Coursers.
next turn we can push that meddling mage and get in for a bunch. This is looking pretty good. Even if they have a reflector mage, I think we're in pretty good shape here. Coursers seemed fantastic this game. Okay. Yeah, those coursers were really good. We drew a lot of cards off of them. Especially in spots when we needed to hit land. We did. That was great. Pyroclasm, Jun Charm, Engineer Explosives, Murderous Cut. Don't really think I want Finx. I don't think Finx is. Is uh, yeah, I don't think Finx is really what we want to be doing. Um, take out the Thought Seizes and an Inquisition. It's what we've been doing lately this matchup. I think it's the right plan. It's possible that... No, it's definitely not possible that we want... <laughs> um, yeah, this hand looks great. Not possible that we want Obstinate Bail off instead of Huntmaster. Huntmaster's fantastic here. It's so good. Here's a champion. I wonder if we can kill that thing with the Pyroclasm before it becomes a problem. They need to have two humans this turn. Or one Thalia's lieutenant. Or one Thalia. Any of those would be really good. It's getting a little scary. They could, like, meddling mage. Freebooter would also prevent the pyroclasm. But at least then we can terminate. Okay. I like that. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No F6ing. No F6ing. If they just say go here, then that would be awesome. I mean, they would have played another human, right? Okay, cool. So, um, Blood Crypt. Yeah, Blood Crypt. We need a red, we need as much black as possible, we need as much green as possible. I think it's just going to be Overgrown Tomb here. So that worked out. Now, hopefully, let's see. A Mantis Rider would be pretty good against us. But we have this Terminate. Thalia is pretty good against us, too. But we have this Tarmogoyf. Um, that really looked like a turn where they could have used Reflector Mage and didn't, because we didn't have any creatures. So that really makes me want to, like, leave up Terminate. I think that's what I'm going to do here. I could also get Bitter Blossom in play, but I think it's really dangerous if they have, like, Exalted or Thalia's, Gar uh, Thalia's Lieutenant or something like that. If they're just going to attack, I think I'm fine with this. Second main phase, they cast a creature of some sort. Alright, well... So I wanted to wait to make sure they couldn't play another Thalia. But now we've got Restoration Angel problems. Okay, well, that all went pretty well. Here's a Dread Boar. Seems like a good time to play Bitter Blossom. I don't think I want a Liliana. I guess I could Liliana. We have extra Bitter Blossoms to discard here. It'll also make our Tarmogoyf really good next turn. And our life total isn't the safest. So they discarded a land. I'm assuming that they have another Thalia Guardian of Thraven in their hand. 
and possibly a Reflector Mage. Very interesting to play that land. Reflector Mage on an empty board. And a normal hierarch. Okay, well, I really like our spot right now. Can we play an ooze? And a. I think we want to play a Tarmogoyf. We could actually play both Tarmogoyf and ooze. Let's see what they sacrifice. I mean, I'm guessing they sacrifice the hierarch. Um, yeah, I don't think... So the worst-case scenario for us here is that we play the Tarmogoyf Goyf and Scavenging Ooze, and they draw Reflector Mage, they bounce the Goyf, they attack Liliana, we untap, we Dreadbore one, make them sacrifice another, we've lost our Ooze, or we just hang on to Ooze and we've, we lose Liliana, and that's fine. Yeah, I think we're I think we're in pretty good shape if we just play out these two creatures here and hang on to this dread boar. The dread boar is um, really good um, mantis rider insurance, or pretty good mantis rider insurance at least. It's gonna be very hard for them to attack with anything other than a mantis rider this turn, or they could get a reflector mage. Dire Fleet Daredevil. Wow, that's a great draw from them. And I don't have any green mana up. So there's Terminate on our ooze. So that was about... Man, that was a great draw. Holy crap. And I'm not blocking. Wow. Super good top deck by them. Okay, well there's a Huntmaster. Uh, what does that mean? Um, I think that means we attack first. They don't want to block. Cast this Huntmaster. Now the problem is that neither the Huntmaster or the Wolf Token is especially good at blocking either of these creatures. But if they don't draw something here, then we're in super duper good shape. Yeah, we're not at, we're not blocking. And if they just yeah okay, we're in great shape here. I guess the worst thing for us would be if they hit a resto angel. But that has not happened. I think we attack like this. And then I'm going to Dreadbore and I'm going to Bitter Blossom, and then that's going to flip the Huntmaster again. Just trying to play around Restoration Angel. It's probably. It's, it's, it's so unlikely for it to be in their hand. I guess I should have attacked with the. Wolf, no. I don't know. Interesting. But now we get this flipped, so... We're in very good shape. Can't imagine that they can come back from this... I guess they could have a Reflector Mage on the Ooze, and that would save them some time. But then we... F f f well... 
I mean, any time the Huntmaster flips, it's bad for the opponent. Either way. <laughs> okay. Well, that went really well. Um, yeah. Anytime they have a little bit of a slow hand or it lines up really well for your for your removal, then it seems like you you take it pretty easily. Although the Huntmaster was really a good draw there towards the end of the game. All right. Next round. Back for round four. Lost the die roll. Mulliganing. Um, I would keep this on six. Like, take away any of these spells, and this hand is fine on six. But on f seven, I think we can do better. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So we don't know if that's going to be good or not, but I think it's important that we keep it just in case um, we're playing against some kind of aggro deck here. We are playing against what I have to imagine is Scred Red. Which, interestingly enough, is actually a pretty tough matchup. Um, I think my plan here is going to be to... Uh, okay, that threw me through a loop for a second. So they don't have a Mind Stone. I think my plan here is going to be to... Um, no, 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 no. I can't, I can't actually get Goyf out of Bolt range, can I? Stomping ground. Now that could have been a mistake because of because of Blood Moon. Hmm. Yeah, that could have actually been a huge mistake. I might have just lost the game. <laughs> um, okay, so how do we get out of this then? Uh, wow, that was probably terrible. Alright. I think we're going to play an ooze and say go. The thing about that is that ooze dies to scred. Yep. Are we dead? Yeah. Uh, uh, Griff, what are you doing? Alright, well at least we have some spells rolled up here. And we do have a forest in our deck. If this is Koth, then I think we're safe to concede. P and Kirin isn't much better. But at least our bolt does something. So we have a forest in the deck. I guess I have to play it out, see if I draw it. Inquisition's okay. Would have liked that before. <laughs> to know if I had Blood Moon coming or not. Okay, two Screds. And a mountain. So, one scred and a mountain. Um, so they can scred for four now. So if you draw the forest, we're playing Huntmaster for sure. Alright, alright, alright. Desperate Ritual? What in the world? We're taking a scred. Need to draw that forest. In the meantime, let me tell you about the story. I was at SCG Regionals last year, and I was in the top four, and my opponent was playing Jund. And in the mirror, they brought in Blood Moon against me. Which was a little crazy, but it almost worked. Not because I didn't play around it, but because I just didn't have any non-basics. And I ended up... I was in like a huge amount of trouble, and then just in succession drew Swamp Forest. Alright, I think we say that now is about the time when we start to 
bolt away these thopters. I'll just do one for now, because they might play something big next turn I need to terminate. I don't think I want to terminate this thopter. Courser of Crufix is coming out. Man, I can't believe I lost. I, I feel like if I just go fetch a forest there, I'm winning this game very easily. Huge mistake. Uh, that was bad. Bad, bad, bad. Seemed like the right thing at the time. <laughs> just, just forgot that they had Blood Moon in their deck. I think we have one... Actually, I'll turn off the auto yields here. I can terminate the mountain. If I have, I think I have one turn to draw a forest here before I'm in too too much trouble. I think I'm in too much trouble now. Okay. So, punted one away there. However, I think this is a totally reasonable matchup to... I don't know. I think I think that this... I think our opponent's deck is really bad. <laughs> uh, so we might be in good shape here. Um, Duress, I think, is fine. I don't really want Damping Sphere. I don't want Jun Charm. I don't want... Actually, no, Kitchen Finks probably isn't that good because they have Anger of the Gods. Engineer Explosives can't really deal with anything that's too problematic. Murderous Cut is probably better than Fatal Push. Oh, yeah, Blightning. Blightning's the nuts. Forgot about that card. Um, sometimes I'll take out Liliana in these matchups because of, because of Blood Moon. Like, if I take out the Lilianas, then as it's set up, if I have a forest and a swamp, then I'm good to go. I can cast everything in the deck. For th that's the same reason I don't want Finx or Baloth. But I can actually cast Liliana um, with the amount of basics that I have in the deck. Let's cut Lilianas. They play Desperate Ritual, which is really interesting to me. Um, so let's play... I don't think I want Pyroclasm or Jun Charm. I guess, you know, P Jun Charm's probably okay. And let's play... They don't have any graveyard interaction in their deck. Let's just play a Murderous Cut. We're getting real scientific over here, but... No, we got to ship this one. This hand looks great, actually. Fantastic. Um, another land on top is fine for us. So we can use... We can actually go get... All the lands that we need. Um, in that case, Bloodstained Mire first. It slows us down a lot to play like this, but their first turns of the game are just like them spewing off removal spells on our stuff. So I'm not too overly concerned that we're, like, wasting an opportunity here. So now we just kind of dare them to go Desperate Ritual, Blood Moon. And they don't want to. I think, I, 
think I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Now that I have these fetch lands in play, I don't really want to draw a swamp and a forest. This is going to be one of those matchups where I played around Blood Moon in game two and lost because of it, and I didn't play around it in game one and lost because of it, you know. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't think I... Well, no, playing out this Grim Lava Mancer is probably fine. I mean, it just gets bolted. But it grows our Tarmogoyf out of bolt range. Yep. Fair enough. See if they just play a Blood Moon anyway. Molten Rain! Oh my god! What in the world? Alright, well here's a 4-5 Goyf. Now it's possible I'm supposed to play... Wow, Molten Rain. It's possible I'm supposed to play, like, Kologon's Command or something there, because I don't know how long I'm going to have black mana for this game. They could Blood Moon right now. But I think it's important to just get this 4-5 down. Like, this Goyf is real beefy compared to the rest of their deck. Like, if they play a Blood Moon, then they're pretty far behind. Turns off a lot of the stuff that they could have here. Spirit Guide into Pia and Kirin. Okay, alright. Well, that's a good draw, not a great one. No blocks. Wooded Foothills for another Overgrown Tomb into Terminate plus Tarmogoyf looks pretty good here. I don't really feel like I want them to untap with Pia and Kieran. And I need to pressure them. I almost tapped my mana wrong. <laughs> uh, terminate here. That was a pretty desperate spirit guide action there. It's fine. We take that. We're super out of scred range here. I could blightning? I don't really feel like that's a good idea. I think a better idea is for me to hang back they're going to leave back both their Thopters to chump block this turn. I guess they could bolt twice. If they do that, then I'll probably Blightning. Okay. They lost a Storm Breath and a Storm Breath. Wow, this deck is crazy. Okay, it's fair. That was a crazy deck. Okay, so I guess I don't think it's worth bringing in any of these cards. The only thing maybe is Pyroclasm. Like, it answers Pia and Kieran very well. That card is pretty problematic, actually. And Grim Lava Mancer really does actual nothing, so... Yep. Let's do this. Um... Yeah, this is a keep. Not in love with it. Plus, they have... Because of Spirit Guide, they're capable of playing a turn one Blood Moon. Okay, Relic of Progenus is pretty good against our Goyf. But not against Bitter Blossom. And I am going to Swamp Thought Seize right now. Well, here's the thing. If I'm Thought Seizing, then I'm playing around Blood Moon a little bit. 
So I may not need the swamp. I might be able to go get a blood crypt. It starts to look really bad, though, if they have two blood moons. Plus, you never know what they're going to get with this relic. And I also, like, I need to draw another land anyway to cast most of my stuff, so... Bolt, Stormbreak, Relic. I'm not too concerned about the Bolt. I, I think my plan this game is going to be Bitter Blossom. I just hope it gets me there. Although, I don't really see Stormbreath Dragon doing that much against Bitter Blossom. So I think I take the Relic of Progenitus. Because we got most of that stuff checked. Uh, sure. <laughs> I want to get them into a position where they they feel like they need to sacrifice the relic. That was pretty good. Question now is, do I get a red source? How hard do I play around this? this uh, potential blood moon. The other thing is that we're our plan is Bitter Blossom. So I could go get a forest of Tarmogoyf. I could go get a stomping ground. I can go... Really, any fetchable land is... We have potential to want here. I guess everything but Overground Tomb. Um, I'm going to go... I just have to guess, basically. And I'm just going to play... Yeah, I'm just going to get a mountain. Save our life total a little bit. Yeah, alright. Okay. Colgon's Command's a nice one. We have Bolt available if they do something like a Spirit Guide or a Ritual into Storm Breath Dragon and attack us. Then we have this Bolt ready to go to block and kill it. Okay, so that's cool that we have double black now, even through a blood moon. Um, something like bolt, bolt on the fairies, and then attack with storm breath dragon would be a little scary. I think it's a blightning time. Uh, we're gonna tap like this to leave up black. This might induce Relic Regenitus, which would be great, because then it, we could get our Timer Wife going. Nope, didn't. Spirit Guide, Storm Breath. So we don't know their last card. I'm not attacking. Okay, that's good. Needed that. Five is a storm breath. It is Chandra. Okay. That we can also beat. Molten Rain, exiled, we take two. Blackleaf Cliffs is not the best. Um, we're going to bolt... No, 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 no. We're going to attack Chandra twice first. This 
So now they might bolt the Chandra. Okay. Uh, so since they did that, Colagon's command starts to look a little better. Something like Colagon's command make you discard deal two to Chandra. That does start to look a little better. The problem is that we don't get our Tarmogoyf into play. They would have to have a pretty crazy good hand to really maximize, or you know, two cards plus the top to really maximize the Chandra being in play. I think we, I think we do this. I want to get some cards into graveyards. Tarmogoyf isn't that good yet because, okay, and it was a scred. Another scred, we can deal with that. I want to get some more cars in my graveyard so I can fire off a murderous cut whenever I feel like it. So now they're probably choosing between like casting, let's see, you know, a five drop or casting the scred. They might have a five drop of some sort in their hand. Oh, that's also true. They can just <laughs> deal me the damage. That's right. So now we go to eight. Ooh. I don't think that's very good right now, but it's cool. <laughs> um, yep. Going to go ahead and attack upstairs. Play a Tarmogoyf. that past the turn on upkeep we bolt here so because they didn't kill the fairy rogue okay so that's interesting we could upkeep jun charm to deal two to everything, or we could just murderous cut that and start getting busy. I kind of like that plan. Well, now, <laughs> now that I didn't do that on my upkeep in response to the Bitter Blossom, I'm going to do it for sure. Um, Problem is we have to leave up mana. Let's attack with this. Let's see what they do. They don't really want to do anything. So let's make Goyf a 3-3. Three, three. They have instance planeswalkers and they will have creatures in a little bit. Two plus one plus one counters on a goif. So now we're getting in for a pretty good chunk of damage. It's going to be tough for them to attack with Thopters. I guess it's possible that, nope, sorry, it's 5-6, so it's still out of, well, I guess they could have scredded there. Don't know what their last card is, because they 
they use this bolt. Oh, it's a bolt upstairs. Okay, well. So now they got to try and draw another one. P and Kieran. Wow, that's super good. Ooh, that was a good draw. Really good draw. Uh, not gonna get there, are we? Yeah, we'll put them in a position where they had to top deck pretty much right there. I don't think they were getting past, like we were attacking for lethal. I don't think they were beating us with anything other than Pia and Kira in that turn. Yep. That was a tough one. Alright, well, we'll be back for round five. Let's see if we can 4-1 this league. We're back. This is round five. We win this, we 4-1. We lose, we cash. So we're in pretty good territory. Um, we want to play first. Pretty unhappy with how I played that last round. But that's okay. We're going to keep this. opponent's name is Punt Then Wine. It's pretty much what I'm doing right now. I'm going to I OK first. Don't have any threats in this hand, which is really bad against this deck. Tough call. The thing is that if the Ancient Stirrings into their best draw, which is Amulet, we kind of have an answer for it anyway. So I'm going to take Summoner's Pact, and then I'm going to Thought Seize the Titan. So that they can have as much mana as they want, but they don't get to do anything with it. I mean, alternatively, I could have taken the Lotus Bloom, but that's, like, really not a problem. Lotus Bloom is gone, jumps on my gun. I'm going to Thought Seize you this turn anyway, so whatever. We're going to get down this Quagmire while we have a chance. We're going to Thought Seize. That was actually a terrible play. Well, first of all, <clears throat> um, I'm just going to go ahead and get the Titan out of their hands. I think Titan is better than Summoner's Pact, although them drawing Summoner's Pact was super good. I'm going to take the Titan. Like, they could Azusa or something, but we have these answers for it. Um, the reason that was bad, I guess, is because, well, they can't play in Azusa next turn anyway. So, never mind. But if they did end up playing in Azusa, I'd be like, oh, man, I sure wish I had a red source right now. So I should have thought these before I played my land. I'm going to play Vernon Catacombs. Hold up. K command. Next turn is when the uh, bloom comes into play here. So we are Tolaria Westing for a pact, I imagine. Yep. So I guess the reason you do that is so that you can go get Bayloth on when I Kolagon's command. I think I have to Kolagon's Command to destroy the artifact here, otherwise they just cast a Titan. We're going to go get Stomping Ground. Of course it would have been good a little while ago. Um, let's play the Ravine. Let's say go! Because we are facing down a Titan if we don't kill this Lotus Bloom. The thing is that they can go get um, a Bailoff, but it's really not that good in the face of this Quagmire and Raging Ravine and Corsair and everything, so... And it does cost... Like, it would cost them, because they would have to go Summoner's Pact for it, so... Summoner's Pact... For Titan... 
They figure that they can do that because they've got this Lotus Bloom coming into play. That is fine. Very interesting. Huh. So now they're on four mana. They'll have five mana next turn. So they can't cast the Titan next turn anyway. Very interesting plays over there. Um, Huntmaster or Courser? I think, I think I'd rather play a Courser here. Um... I kind of just want to find some disruption. Because either way, we're not clocking them enough to do anything relevant. So there's another Titan. So they're just going to get all their Titans out of the way here. Play around all their Thought Seizes and whatnot. Yep. So now we know their hand is Gemstone Mine, Gemstone Mine, Titan, Titan. Lava Mancer is not especially good for us. Luckily for us, we don't have to face down a. Uh, an amulet. They're going to go get a bunch of lands, and those are going to be good. But no amulet helps us out a lot. Going to play my hand out. Bitter Blossom on top, of course, not the best best card we could have drawn here. There's our Titan. Boros Garrison and Telerio West. Yep. Lotus Bloom. Okay. So there is a Liliana, which is a little late. But it gets pretty good when you have Grim Lava Mancer in play. I think what we're going to do this turn is... So they got the Boros Garrison, right? They have enough mana to actually cast a Titan and um, give it haste. If they drew the Slayer Stronghold. So I want to make sure that they don't do that. If we just say go, we get to flip Huntmaster, Lava Mancer, the Titan, and then K-Command the Titan when they go to combat. Another thing that we've got rolled up our sleeve here is this Quagmire. That could definitely come into play. 
Calaria West. I'm guessing this is going to go get a Pact of Negation. So, let's let them resolve that. Pact of Negation. They have enough mana to cast their next Titan. No, a Hive Mind. Oh god, okay. So, because they got the Pact, we can't actually cast anything right now. We have to hope that they don't have another zero mana spell. To cast something and then packed it. You don't really see hive mind a lot in these. Um, yeah, we can't cast anything anymore. I guess I could have. Uh, yeah, you know, I messed up because I should have, in response to hive mind, Colgon's command, and ah, that was bad. That was bad. I think I actually could have won. I guess the problem with the is that okay. So if I had responded to Hive Mind by casting the Bolt and the Colgon's command, the problem is that then they attack. Can't play any spells or else they get countered by Pact of Negation. So, this is 6, this is 8, this is 10. We don't have enough mana to do anything here. I guess our plan then is going to be attack with everything and hope that on our upkeep with the hive mind trigger on the stack we can fire off all these burn spells So we have to try and resolve this bolt. There's also a chance that our opponent plays uh, Radiant Fountain in their deck. So here are two lands. I also think I messed up by attacking with the Lava Mancer there. Yeah, there's a Radiant Fountain. We go to 15. Let's see if they cast anything here. They might try and kill us. So that's fine, because they've already played a land. Summer's packed, so I have to pay for that. It's getting packed. It's getting packed again. Uh, yep, S same targets. Yes. Sure. <laughs> so I have to play a lot of blue in my upkeep. But I 
think I can just kill them as long as they don't have anything else going on. Well, they get to s I get to Summer's Pact. Uh, I'm going to go get a, s a Tarmogoyf. Is there any reason that I should bolt now? I don't th think so. All right, we're gonna put this on the stack. Okay, they're on the stack. Colgon's command. Tiger Blair discards a card and takes two. And bolt. All these hive mind things are gonna trigger, but we're just gonna do this now so I don't screw this up. Hit F6 and just see what happens here. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on anymore. I think we should probably have lost this game. <laughs> they can put us to 10 with their uh, with their copies of Lightning Bolt and Kologon's Command. Grim Lava Mancer was actually a pretty good uh, pretty good draw here for us. Yep, I take three. Like, I don't think they have another Pact. I think they punted by... They, like, went super aggressive with their Pact. They played a second Pact of Negation. Whereas if they had a Pact of Negation just in their hand to counter our Bolt, then they win. All right. Duress, yes. Damping Sphere, yes. Blightning, yes. One cut. We are going to take out the Fatal Pushes, and we are going to take out the Bitter Blossoms, and we are going to take out... What have we been doing now? Should have played the second Titan from my hand and Vesuva on Radiant Fountain, I guess. Oh, how do I do the thing? I wonder if I'm allowed to use this uh, emoji. Does this work in Magic Chat? Uh, two more cards to get a cut. Um, as good as Lava Mancer was, it's usually pretty bad. They always have a Zusa, so bolts are good there. And Corsair is pretty slow. Yeah. I think I can take a Courser out. We go down to very few threats. There are like 10 creatures we can attack with now, but it's really all about that Damping Sphere. Am I going to keep this? I think so. It's got Liliana. It's got a discard spell. It's got a threat removal spell. That's the whole deck, so it's got, you know, contents of Jund. But we can snag an amulet here. Ravine's fine. Um, Blood Crypt. Hello. They put a card on top with their temple. Let's get out of here. Another temple, yep. So now the question is going to be what land to play, and it is Overgrown Tomb into Scavenging Ooze for sure, because now we have enough sources, or untapped sources to play uh, this Liliana. 
They kept a card on top, but still haven't done anything, really. It's got to be... Got to have been a Titan, I would imagine. Um, don't think I need the wooded foothills. I'd rather save that around because I have Corsair in my hand. Also, I can just discard it right now. Yeah. What do I discard the ravine? I think I discard the rav the ravine. Let's see if they have Bayloth. Nope, no Bayloth. I like that. So their hand is Temple of Mystery. Hive Mine, Gemstone Mine, and two cards we don't know about. Problem right now is that we don't have double green, so that was actually a terrible play. I needed to play that Wooded Foothills. Oh, fuck, that was stupid. Ah, oh, it's just Punt City. Punt City Special. Should not have played the Swamp. Should have gotten a forest of some sort. And and uh, been able to play this Corsair without doing all this stuff. Now if the top card's a land, I'm going to feel like a goofball. So, our opponent's on four mana now. This Blightning might be good. Gruel Turf. Getting back the Temple of Mystery. So they do have enough to Pact of Negation, this Blightning. But that's fine for us. Red Catacombs is a good draw. Let's Blightning. There goes Temple and Hive Mind. Do I even make them discard? Um, that is, it is bad to make them not discard if their hand is like exactly Hive Mind land Pact of Negation. I think it's actually better to keep this murderous cut in my hand. Let's eat the Azusa and get in. No. Eat the Azusa and attack. We're going to leave up. I want to use a special land anyway, which is cool. And we're going to leave up murderous cut on a titan. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, going off with the minus six is good, but it just usually doesn't matter. Like, doesn't have to matter, because we can murderous cut this thing right now. They have a sun home, but they don't have any white mana. We get to do a lot of damage to them next turn. Bolt or Kolagon's Command wins for us, or another Blightning, unless they go for a Radiant Fountain here. No, they went for the Colony Garden. Okay. And the reason is that... Um, We're going to be able to eat this Titan. I'm going to go get a... Um, I'll go get another Overgrown to him. I think that's fine. Shouldn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things. Huh. 
Huntmaster on top. Now they're getting back on land. They got back Colony Garden, sure. Should be not a problem. I mean, I'm guessing that they have another Titan in hand. But we have a lot of attackers. They have to go get Radiant Fountain. Or have like a Slaughter Pact or something, but that's not especially good for them either. Don't know anything about their hand except that they have um, a Colony Garden in it. Hornet Queen is pretty good. But I think we're all, all set because of Huntmaster. I guess they have to have... Um, they have to have Slaughter Pact in order for us to not just win here. Or Bayloth. Oh, oh, I didn't even think of that. Oh, that'd be bad. Uh, oh, we just lost the game. Wow. Wow. Oh, we just lost the game. I keep doing this. I keep doing this to myself. Keep doing this to myself. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> wow. Okay. So they have to pay the trigger. Why did... Oh, my Huntmaster didn't flip because of the pact. Yeah, God. So now they're at six. We're facing down a lot of... Oh, God, I'm going to lose this game because of that. Jesus Christ. Oh. If I just don't do anything... If I just don't do anything, then we're fine. They actually have enough to sun home <laughs> their their stuff here. Can't block. There's an amulet, so that's pretty terrifying. Don't know what their last card is. Oh, God, what have I done? Oh, I was supposed to eat the thing. Okay. So we say go. Upstairs, hit the Hornet Queen. So now our ooze is a 6-6. Six, six. This is a Titan. That was a good draw by them. Ah, man. Okay. So now they get to do a bunch of stuff, including get Slayer's Stronghold. 
However, we can use the ooze. I guess I can Vesuva now. Vesuva the garrison. Oh, man. What a nightmare. So we got to figure out what they're attacking with. Let's see what they get. So they can get Vesuva and copy Boros Garrison and just any other land, and then, then they have enough to, um, yep, now they have enough to use Sunhome. So what's good here is that we're going to gain a bunch of life. Got to figure out where we're blocking, though. I kind of think I want to block... How many spells do they play this turn? Just the one Titan. So... I think I block here. That could be wrong, though. Maybe it's like this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think there's a way out for us here. Yeah, so this looks lethal, but it's actually not because of this ooze. Eat the queen. Eat the ooze. Okay. Now these trade. Now I eat another one. No, another creature. God. Just punted this game away. I wonder if it's actually just right to concede here. I know that I can't really survive. I can't really survive, and I don't really want to reveal that I have Damping Sphere in my deck. I might be able to survive, though, somehow. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right, what are we doing here? Um... We can attack with these creatures. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. So now we actually have enough mana to... or enough size on our ooze to block and trade. Oh, it's got trample though. So no, it doesn't work. No, we're dead. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, punt then wine. That's me this time. It was our opponent last time. And we did reveal that bitter block or that uh, that damping sphere. Wow. Okay. All right. How do I get... Uh, let's see. You know, Jun Charm and Pyroclasm would have been very good there. Uh, I punted that so bad. I punted with the Courser play, too. Okay. I don't mind Engineered Explosives. Especially on the play, I think it's okay. Um, let's get rid of a... Um, Dreadboard's a little loose. Ugh, 
I've got Baloth on my radar every time. Every time I've got Baloth on my radar. Uh, now we are... Uh, we're keeping this. Our clock is super far down right now. So we're going to duress on turn one. Pack, bloom, bloom. We'll get this packed. They have... a bunch of nonsense in their hands. I guess the problem with this is that the Thought Seize looks pretty bad. Yeah, now the Thought Seize looks pretty bad. I don't think it's worth casting it. Radiant Fountain, sure. That was not in their hand previously. Here's a Goyf. So the problem, yeah, the problem with that play that I made uh, with, the, with the discard spell there is that if I had taken a Lotus Bloom, let's see, Sun Home. If I had taken a Lotus Bloom, then I can assure that I've got something else to discard later with the Thoughtseize. Like, this just might whiff. Nope, another Pact and a Rex Sage. The Rex Sage came in because of the... Um, yeah, the Rex Sage came in because of the damping sphere that they saw. So that's great. So now I guess we just have to win before they... Uh, you know what? I believe that they can actually cast a Titan this turn. Wow. That's pretty incredible. Um, but we get to terminate it, so it's not the hugest deal. And there's still... Yeah, they can still make a land drop here. Because they have the Teleria West. Stirrings for another Teleria West, sure. Teleria West for a Titan. Or for a Summer's Pact, and then cast it, go get a Titan. Yeah, I'm just going to have six. Not a lot of clock growing on right now. So there's that thing for green. They play Titan. I'm guessing that they're going to go get two copies of Simic Growth Chamber. Chromic Vestige is a nice one. Nope. Terminate's pretty good. Now they have to pay for Pact. That means that they can't use a Teleria West here. Is it me or did they just pay five mana for their packed trigger? I guess it's not going to matter. All right, all right, all right. So I guess we Inquisition them. I don't, well, I could play a Tarmogoyf instead. Yeah, that's probably better. Increases our clock. Like, the only thing they have in hand is Reclamation Sage. Ancient Stirrings. For Amulet. Okay, so that's terrifying. They can 
Teleria West for a pact right now. If they do that, then we can Inquisition them. That starts to look really good. Summoner's Pact. Amulet. Sure. Okay, now we can Inquisition... Take the pact. Um, you know, I guess one of their outs is... Hmm, what are their outs here? We attack them for 10, and then we... I guess we... I think we just play another... Let's go get Overgrown Tomb. What a match this has been. So they can draw a Titan, bounce Colony Garden, play another Colony Garden. Azusa, Reclamation Sage, and you're dead. So, we won that round 2-1. to one. We should have lost game 1. We should have won game 2. Game 3 was weird. But I think that's how it's supposed to go. You just bring in a whole bunch of removal spells, and then, like, without Summer Bloom, this deck gets a lot worse. Played against this deck a lot now online. I don't know why it's very popular here, but it's 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 interesting. Whew. <sighs> okay. Anyway, thank you very much for sticking through that. Uh, <laughs> pretty crazy league we just played. Um... So yeah, we went 4-1. and one. The list actually seemed pretty good. I don't think any of the changes that we made came into play, really. The Dread Boars or the, or the Finks or whatever, but... That was a marathon round at the end there. I was just... Losing my head. Um, so thank you guys very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. And we'll keep working on this deck. Thanks a lot.